in this section we will be going through history of sap i don't want to dwell too much into theory but this is important because from history you learn about the future why we went into embedded route you, we will understand try to understand how over the period sap has evolved and what led to eventual embedded analysis so let's start so this is the journey sap has taken they started in 1971 with their first product called r1 then they launched R2 in 1979 which was popular and most popular product was launched in 92 which was very popular and very successful as well then they launched ERP netweaver in 2004 which was also good in 2011 they came up with something new which was not their core expertise but they launched a database as well as hana platform so in 2011 sap did a major shift in terms of database as well because till now all the products sap product had access to various other databases like oracle db2 etc now sap was saying that we also have a database which is very fast and very good with our products but not many people took it i would say then came s4 hana in 2015 so here what they did was they did a major shift from their product line of ecc and they shifted to the fourth generation which is s4 hana and then they said that there is a new generation business suite which will work with only hana and it was a major shift because it is the main core product of sap so they launched s4 hana in 2015 which have been gaining quite a ground intuitive ui and all the features it has So S4 HANA is a next generation business suite which has very nice HTML5 Fiori UX and you can extend lot of application lot of things are pre built you can use them and it is available on prem as well as on cloud and it natively integrates with lot of other tools of SAP and you can do big data crunching or IoT devices data feeding and you can do lot of things on mobile as well or various devices and you can also feed in social media data lot of things are there sap s4 hana is a new generation business suite with sap hana platform and this is very effective and very modern in its approach as compared to what we have been seeing with sap old products so s4 hana came into picture because of hana and what hana did let's see so the hana advantage was what used to happen in the past if you had some data in your cache cpu could access it fast and you it can deliver the data to you but what about the data which was on disk in the memory so here they had input output bottleneck where you wanted a data and sap used to take lot of time to get the data out for you and it was because it was not on hana with hana what they did was there was massive amount of parallel processing all the data was in memory we had columnar storage we have lot of compression so the throughput was huge still the backup was happening in storage disk but the main application was in sap hana which really pumped up sap's performance and which helped in boosting s4 hana's performance and it opened the gate for a lot of innovation which could be done with s4 hana and hence s4 hana came into existence so it was not just hardware technology innovation it was software technology innovation as well and at hardware level sap hana platform has a multi core architecture they have massive parallel processing and they have 64 bit address space from 32 bit which was earlier and we have major throughput like 100 gb per second data throughput which is huge and obviously decline in hardware prices has helped sap a lot software technologies we now have columnar storage as well we have huge compression we have option of partitioning and there are no aggregate tables so what happened here is sap hana made s4 hana and other sap product very fast which really helped in overall product features which led us to s4 hana simplification so because we had a huge power at the database level what sap did was they reduced lot of tables lot of data which was split across multiple tables for example sap finance had so many tables now s4 hana has simple finance which has few tables similarly with sap logistics they reduced so many tables to couple of tables basically so you can see the graph how s4 hana has compressed the overall database requirement as such for s4 hana products which in turns helped ecc in maintaining the system and making it more agile and more user friendly 
Now let's come to OLTP and OLAP. We are going towards SAP Embedded one by one. So first what we saw was history of SAP product evolution. Then we saw HANA Advantage. Now we saw how S4 HANA has been simplified. Now come to OLTP and OLAP debate. What happened earlier was SAP said that you know with previous line of products if you want to do heavy reporting then what you do is keep the warehouse system separate so you do a transaction in ECC load the data overnight in any other data warehouse or SAP BW and then uh, even accelerator was a thing earlier then you do the reporting so transaction system was different than the reporting system because SAP couldn't handle everything in one system because it was very heavy on transaction system and businesses do not want their transaction system to be heavily loaded. So with S4 HANA what SAP said was you can merge OLTP with OLAP and you do reporting in S4 HANA itself because our hardware is so fast it can handle both the things in the same system. Now it leads us to a question whether SAP BW is not required. SAP says that it is still required and, and they are also doing heavy investment in SAP BW space. They have BW for HANA 2.0 recently launched and we also have a course on that on Udemy. So what SAP intend to say is all the operational reporting which went to SAP BWA should be brought back to S4 HANA. So what happened with SAP BW is everything reporting people used to send their data to BW for the reporting purposes. So BW became operational reporting platform rather than making it a analytical platform or analysis platform. It became a dumping ground of data. So SAP says that if you have operational reports come here in S4 HANA, do the things, do the reporting and with that they have added a lot of other features and called it SAP Embedded Analytics. So this is where we led to. What you will see in a lot of documentation or a lot of people say is that if 20% of your system is loaded with reporting then it's okay. You can do the reporting. If it is breaching that then don't do it. Even if you are on S4 HANA don't do your reporting on S4 HANA if it is breaching 20% mark that you are consuming a lot of space from your system then don't do it otherwise you can go ahead and do your reporting as well so that's completely fine and obviously if you have multiple system like you have one ERP and you have multiple other ERPs then it makes sense to feed all the data into SAP BW for a single version of truth. But if you have only one system, one ERP, S4 HANA and top of that you have SAP BW then use BW for analytical purposes and not for dumping data, operational data into BW system or at least don't do the operational reporting in SAP BW. Do that here in S4 HANA as long as your system can handle. So this is the idea about OLTP and OLAP. Don't confuse that we don't want SAP BW. It is required if your pressure on your S4 HANA system is huge then you can look into BW or if you want to do a enhanced reporting, uh, analytical reporting then you can look into SAP BW. So that is the case. So this is the origin that if you want to do reporting as well as transaction in the same system SAP prepackaged or packaged it into SAP Embedded Analytics. We will see the details in next section. Thank you.